What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I have the final form, the final iteration of the Frozen Orb Sorceress for you guys in Diablo 4 Season 4. It has been a long journey, we've come a long way, we've made major upgrades. However, we don't have everything to Masterwork 12 yet, so I will be working on that today. But, for context, this is probably the final form. I'm going to have some options for you guys, some suggestions for swaps, etc. But this is the final form, guys. Uh, we're going to go over everything, gear, skills, paragon, etc. And then, of course, a nice little showcase. We're only going to be doing a pit tier 50, um, which is pretty solid. We're going to do a pit tier 50, which should be pretty cool. But let's go over the build and talk about all the changes that I have made. So, starting off, we are going... Oh, before we get begin... I do want to give a big shout out to my community over here on YouTube. You lovely, lovely warriors inside the stream. Frozen, Frozen or Frost Nova, insane. We're going to talk about a big change. So thank you guys again for all the suggestions and support in helping this build get perfected. Okay, so we got uh, Firebolt into Enhance 2 only because we need to get to the, the core skills, but also because we're going to have Firebolt as our first enchantment slot. We're just going to be causing... Burning damage to everything, which is going to help us on our Talrashas, and it's going to help us deal a lot more damage with our Paragon board. Next, we're coming down to Frozen Orb. Okay, we're maxing out Frozen Orb here, and we're going into Destructive. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, War, you had it on Greater uh, before, right? The chance to make everything vulnerable. Well, now Frost Nova is going to make everything vulnerable, so we no longer need this. So we might as well go ahead and take Destructive, which will help us maintain our mana because this is a very mana-hungry build, okay? So we got that. One point into Devastation for mana and three into uh, Elemental Dominance for more damage. Then you're going to see a huge change here, okay? Now, I do want to do a disclaimer really quickly, all right? You do need Shaco for this endgame variant. However, you can make some changes for it. You're going to have to sacrifice some uh, some points in the skills in other places, but that's okay. So the build will still work. It may not be as effective, but it will still work just fine. So we don't have any defensive skills except for Ice Armor into Enhanced, and yes, we're doing Mystical. The reason that we're doing Mystical is because not the chill effect, which is nice, but we deal 15% multiplicative damage to frozen enemies. We are going to freeze a lot of enemies very quickly. So this is just a flat damage boost, which is why we're taking it. Next, we have elemental attunement uh, to reset ice armor. And then we are doing glass cannon. Okay, we're maxing it out for more damage. Now, on our skill bar, you are going to see our three other defensive skills here. Okay, so Shaco allows us to take them. All right, or two other ones, excuse me. Shaco allows us to take them, so but we'll, I'll show you the point swap uh, if you guys don't have Shaco yet for this. Uh, next, we're going to take three points into Precision Magic for more Lucky Hit. We do rely on Lucky Hit a lot here, and I'll explain why once we get into gear. Uh, Ice Blades into Summon Ice Blades for the cooldown reduction, which is huge. Uh, Lightning Spear into Invoked for Critical Striking to Stun, which is important. We max out Conjuration Mastery for more damage speed and mana regen. One point into Aligned the Elements. Three points into Mana Shield for damage reduction. One point into Protection for a barrier. We're always going to have a barrier up, but that is important. Next, one point into Flames just to get to Devouring Blaze. We're always going to be CCing, so our Critical Strike bonus is up to 30% multiplicative or Critical Strike damage, which is huge. Next, we got one point into Icy Veil for barrier uh, duration. And then three points into Cold Front so we can apply more chill, which will allow us to uh, more easily freeze our enemies. Next, we got, we're maxing out all four of these, okay? We're doing four into Permafrost for more damage, four in Earth, excuse me, three. Uh, three into Icy Touch for more damage, three into Horror Frost for more damage, and then three into Frigid Breeze just to help with mana. Now, down to our key passive. Yes, we are back on Avalanche for even more Frozen Orbs, which will give us more damage, okay? We are no longer doing Veer's Mastery. However, Veer's Mastery is still very, very strong. I opted for more Frozen Orbs because I feel pretty good about my damage reduction right now, so we're good to go. Now, as far as swapping these, like if you don't have Shaco, you still want Teleport and Flame Shield. So what I would suggest is the first thing I would do is drop Frigid Breeze. You come up here, you grab one point into Flame Shield only. This is the only thing you need. You don't need the Enhanced, and you don't need the Shimmering. Then we go one point into Teleport, one point here. 
And then we would love to get to Shimmering Teleport. So if you wanted to, if you needed to, you take the other point out of Cold Front and apply 16% more chill. And then you put Shimmering uh, Teleport into here. And boom, Bob's your uncle. You have all the skills just fine. I have tested this build like this. It works just fine. Okay, you can still do it. However, because I have Shaco, I don't need the addition. But for the purposes of today's video, I will showcase with the skill points in there so you guys can still see the damage without it, okay? Um, next, into gear. Very important. Of course, we got Shaco, which is huge, all right? Everybody knows Shaco. Uh, one of the best in Sly Helms in the game. Uh, next, we're doing regular chest piece. This is to help us get to our armor cap. We're almost there. Um, intelligence, max life, armor, armor, stun. Uh, but the power we're taking is uh, Armor of Fortune, okay? We need as much Lucky Hit as we possibly can get, and you guys are going to see why once we go into the pit, but 25% more when we have a barrier is pretty huge. Accelerating on our gloves. This build, even though it's mana hungry, we do need a lot of attack speed. We want to blow stuff up as quickly as possible. So, accelerating here. We're doing Tabalt. After a lot of testing, Tabalt is just more consistent. It makes the build more consistent with mana, However, if you do not have to vault, what I recommend is coming down here to get a, a leg piece just like this. You're looking for intelligence, max life, armor, max life. Um, you can swap out the other max life or something else, but max life is very good here. And then we're doing concussive strikes. Dan damaging an enemy on a lucky hit has a chance to daze and we do more damage. Now, if you don't want con concussive strikes here, if you feel like your armor is really low, you could just put in juggernaut or put in disobedience however if you see the swap here i'm at 10,000 armor i'm way over the cap it's not a big deal so um you don't really need that but concussive strike seems to be pretty fun you could also take things like ever living if you really want to do for damage reduction you could also take the one when you cast a conjuration uh was it concentration when you uh, cast a conjuration you get damage reduction so all of those are perfectly fine next we got su in the boots very important the reason that we're taking Esu in the boots is because I have a critical strike chance of 20. When I dash, I go to 46. Now, I am missing critical strike chance on these gloves, so my critical strike chance would really be at 50%. But these are huge for the build. It allows us just to melt our enemies even faster. Uh, of course, we have Fractured Winter Glass here. Huge. You have to have this for the build. Talrasha is very important. All the increased damage is insane. And then in our ring, we are no longer doing Prodigies. I feel pretty confident with our mana right now between Tabalt and um, the actual node on Frozen Orb to manage our mana pretty well. You'll see it in the in the example or like the showcase. So I opted for Shredding Blades. Now the first part of Shredding Blades we don't actually want. Or I mean, it's not like that we need it uh, for Ice Blades to deal vulnerable, that's okay. But we do get a flat vulnerable damage buff, multiplicative, if enemies are vulnerable. And let me tell you, everything is vulnerable. Um, Next, we have a two-handed weapon. Now, shout out to Demon and uh, some people in my community here um, for suggesting a two-handed weapon. Now, before, I've always opted for a main hand wand and an off hand. The main reason for this is because we get additional power and we get some more affixes, in particular, cooldown, okay? Um, now, with that said, a two-hander is going to be a massive damage increase. We get about 30% more damage by using a two-hander than we do a main hand and off hand um, in this particular build because of how much we've stacked attack speed. Now, I have written the damage numbers. Okay, so consistently the damage is pretty close. The two-hander is higher, right? 30% more. We're able to hit our, like, 1.92 million shots more consistently um whereas like a good crit on the main hand and an off hand is like at the high end and we're really able to do like more consistent like million shots but a two-hander has been perfect for this build so we're going two-hander and you're putting frozen orb on here for the huge um damage boost okay um again the build works just fine with a wand and an offhand, so if you prefer that, definitely do it. And if you are, then you have Accelerating here, um, which this will end up being swapped. You'll put Frozen Orb back on the wand, and then you have Conceited on the offhand. That's the next best power that you can do, okay? That's more damage. You'll be fine. Your attack speed will be slightly higher by doing this, but 
I feel like the damage buff is pretty good here on the two-handed. So let's go right into the Paragon board. I'm not going to get into too many specifics. The link to down this will be, or the link to this build will be down in the description below. Shout out to Mobilytics. Um, and you guys can go check out everything on here. But I will go over the major changes. So we are running Conjurer. Our Conjurers are going to deal a lot of damage and they last longer, which allows us to have more Conjurations, which in turn will make us do more damage. Then, of course, we have Control for more damage, Destruction for Crit Strike damage. We got Flame Feeder for that um, direct damage to burning enemies, which is huge. We got Exploit for vulnerability damage. Elementalist, which you guys know for damage and um, uh, per stacking for each element. And then we swapped out Tactician instead of Reinforced, okay? This gives us multiplicative damage, and we're still pretty tanky. However, if you do feel like you, you know, are suffering a little bit more damage than you would like, then I would swap out Tactician for Reinforce, and you're good to go. So the big changes on the board, we removed these nodes up here. We took the minimum here, okay? We always are going to have Ice Fall for more Frost Skill damage to Frozen enemies, okay? Um, next, we have the Conjuration, of course, and Conjuration damage. Then we came over and we're taking attack speed nodes. This is very important. So we got attack speed nodes here, all of them there. Then we're going to come down and we have all the attack speed nodes here that we can get. These are the only two boards for Sorcerer that has attack speed. So we have that, right? We got destruction buffed up. And then our next legendary load node is Frigid Fate for more vulnerability damage. We have this maxed up. Uh, um, yeah. So we're, we're pretty solid on the board. We are using seven... Um, uh, glyphs and the build is fantastic. So let's go run a pit really quickly and we'll just showcase this build really fast. So again, this build is still a super, super strong build. It is very consistent. There are at times where it feels like you may run a little bit out of mana, um, but that's just until you get attuned to playing the build. You don't want to be spamming so much. You want to kind of be firing ahead and you just want to cast all of your conjurations, right? And you see all the frozen novas. Oh, that's the last thing. We'll talk about that. Uh, let me talk about this right now. I don't mind losing a little bit of time here. So Frost Nova is our next enchantment slot. I almost forgot, guys. Almost forgot. Frost Nova. On a lucky hit, our conjuration skills have a chance to unleash frozen nova, which is going to automatically freeze our enemies. One. And two, it's going to make everything vulnerable. So this is huge. I know that Frozen Orb in the slot is still very, very strong. And, you know, gives us more Frozen Orbs, which allows us to deal more damage. However, being able to completely CC your enemies so they can't do jack crap to you is pretty insane if you ask me. So you can see just all the Frozen Orbs popping off. You can see them all going crazy. Everything gets frozen. No big deal. And everything is melting on the board. And again, guys, remember, this is with our points in here for the chill and all of that. So, but you can see how, like, you kind of just throw them in front of you. You don't want to spam too much because you want the explosions to get the mana back. So, make sure you're throwing it at them. Just try to gauge, like, how many shots it's going to take for you to actually kill your enemy. Oh, oh, oh. I got CC there for a minute. Make sure you are evading as much as possible with uh, with Asus to get that crit strike. Okay, make sure you're doing that all, as often as possible. And you guys can see, like, we, we just don't have any issues with mana. Just, like, no issues with mana. We're, like, perfectly fine. Lethal. Great. And, guys, I haven't pushed too much on the, the pit this season. Um, we're just now starting to get into it. I have all my glyphs and everything done. So now we're starting to push to level up our gear. So you can imagine that if I had all this gear maxed out to 12, how strong it actually would be. But because we finalized the build, I really wanted to show it and bring it to you guys so you guys could see it and then just level up and do what you need to do for it um, as you're playing along uh, this season with me. So, but you can see, man, we just melt. Now, here's the thing. Before we had some issues with boss damage. Now, I'm going to let my stuff reset here, and then we're going to go in, okay? So, the big thing about this build is the boss damage. However, or single target damage. However, because we CC our opponents so much, you're going to see how fast we... Oh! 
I love the one shots in these things, guys. I, lo I absolutely love the one shots. It is the best thing on the planet. Also, quick little disclaimer here. If the devs would be so gracious to not send me back to the beginning of the map when I die against the boss. Let's try this again for the video. We're nothing but raw footage here, guys. No edits. No, um, so here we go. We want to CC our, our boss as fast as we can. I really hate the one-shots in this game. It's so stupid, but you, you see how fast we CC? Make sure we dodge everything. And, and, like, the boss damage isn't really that bad at all, right? Like, we... Oh, and I died again. I teleported. Devs, please fix the one-shots, please. Please fix the one-shots. Please fix the one-shots. I'm just being a bad player right now. Wasting time for the video. But you guys are getting it raw here. Don't tell me to get good down in the comments, please. <laughs> We just CC our opponent. We blast him. Try to create some distance here. Dodge all that crap. We're going to CC him again. And boom. The damage against the bosses really isn't that bad, guys. It's, it's, not, it's not the worst. Out of all the builds that Sork has, if I would have played that better, I, I finished it the first time. But, um, but yeah, guys, the build is still incredibly powerful, minus the two deaths here. That's just like skill level. I just need to be way better. But anyway, besides that, the strength of the build is still very, very strong. It does pretty good boss damage. Um, I imagine on the final push for this build, leveling all of this stuff to 12 with Masterwork is gonna be insane. So you might have an updated, maybe not a build guy, you might get a small update of some clips and stuff on the channel of me running through this at a max powered frozen orb. But I think this is it, guys. Again, you have your options that I've listed before in the video, so if you wanna go back and check. But yeah, this is the build. I am thoroughly enjoying it. I think it's great. Remember, we're doing, um, what is this? Uh, Sapphire's in here for more vulnerability damage. And then of course we got, uh, skulls in there to help max out our armor this is these are actually the ones right below the max one so my armor will be maxed no problem but yeah guys the build is super fun this has felt the most consistent as far as damage before we really weren't hitting um in the millions we were kind of getting it just over a million with crits this is far more consistent one million two million and that's before we level everything up so again I'm really enjoying this build, but I am ready to move on to Meteor, which is going to be our next build that we do here on the channel. So make sure to like this video. Let's get this thing over 100 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the big changes here because Frost Nova Enchantment, low-key underrated for Sork. Uh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.